You're meeting up with Amazon CEO Andy Jassy. Amazon, of course, the biggest cloud player globally, about 40 percent market share. What are we what are you expecting from this meeting? What do you think the big takeaway will be? Well, one thing was obviously important. We've had an, an antitrust uh, case uh, with uh, Amazon that we have settled uh, in order to have a, a data silo so that the Amazon retail will not use the data of the smaller retailers uh, on, the, on the marketplace, but also that a second buy box will come live to give consumers more choice than they have already. And then, of course, it is very important for us the push for a code of conduct on, in particular, generative uh, AI, uh, in order for us to, you know, safely embrace all the benefits that can come with using these new generations of artificial intelligence. Right, so I do want to ask you about AI. You met with Meta Platform CEO Mark Zuckerberg to discuss possible rules and also usage and safeguards. What direction is the EU going in when it comes to AI? You've seemingly been ahead of U.S. regulators so far and just looking at how this is being used. Give investors, that's our main audience, give them a sense of what direction you're going in because there's a thought that the U.S. in some form or fashion will follow your lead. I think the most important strategic choice is not to regulate technology as such, uh, but to regulate the use of technology and only to regulate when something fundamental is at stake so that there is a the risk of customers being discriminated uh, when they want a mortgage or for patients not being seen as, as who they are in, in, in the health sector. Um, but all of that will happen in, in a couple of years or so. And, and when you look at the generation of, of generative AI, a couple of years is like a century. So what we are pushing uh, with the U.S. and with other global partners is a voluntary code of conduct when it comes to generative AI, because the potential is so enormous. And it would be great if businesses felt that they could safely use generative uh, AI. So, so we try to bridge the situation between now and legislation uh, kicking in uh, by voluntary commitments with the US, uh, if possible, with uh, India, uh, of course, with a, a number of European countries, uh, with Japan, in order for people to see, well, we can safely use also this new, very powerful uh, AI that we literally now have at, at our fingertips. Well, let me ask you, what has been the response to this idea of a voluntary code of conduct? What kind of feedback have you gotten from big tech CEOs, not only here in the US, but also there in the EU? I think the feedback is uh, is pretty good. Um, I think there is a sense that there is a need, uh, and in particular that there is a need for a, a an, an international uh, step forward uh, instead of different uh, jurisdictions competing about who can do less or who or who can do more, because one of the things here is of course that in the development of these large uh, language uh, models. This is very costly. It's also important that you have large uh, market access and that you have a sense of, of level playing field. And I think a voluntary code of conduct would be part of the answer in providing for this. As part of that voluntary code of conduct, how, does you, how do you address data privacy? A lot of concerns about training these AI models and where the data comes from. And for example, I was speaking with the CEO of Aleph Alpha, uh, a German AI company, and they mentioned that there are some concerns about the fact that the AI models might be trained with a California sensibility as opposed to a Heidelberg sensibility. Yes, uh, that is indeed important for, for developers uh, to consider uh, because there are huge differences uh, between us, uh, between Norwegians, between Italians, uh, between Americans. So. Uh, so it is really important to take that uh, thing into consideration. That is one thing. The second thing is our issues like copyright, trade secrets, uh, how to make sure that you can actually uh, protect your, your trade secrets and, and what you have of copyright and IP rights, that they are yours and that they remain uh, yours also when you're engaged with okay. uh, the large uh, language models. All right, we have to talk, talk a little antitrust. Big focus for you. Last week, the European Commission charged Google with violating European antitrust law is using its position in online advertising to minimize its rivals. You're also looking at that Adobe Figma deal, each, of course, an individual case. But how should investors, how should we view your broader view? 
Well, I think uh, the positive for, for investors is, of course, that what we are striving for is a level playing field, an open marketplace where uh, market power is contestable, where other businesses can scale up and, and find their customers. For, for the Google case, uh, this is a, a preliminary view, but there is an, an inherent conflict of interest because uh, Google is at the sell side, they are at the buy side, they are at the market. Uh, when it comes to the uh, the ad tech uh, stack, and it's it's difficult to see if our case is proven how that can be sold without actually selling out selling off either one part uh, of the conflict of interest or the other parts of the sell side or the buy side. So as that case continues to move forward, I know you said you're all about fairness and basically balancing out the playing field. But could we see some you know moves that you just mentioned, forcing companies to sell part of their business? Is that the, the direction that you believe that you're going to continue to go in? Well, it's, uh, it's an extraordinary uh, move on, on our side. We, of course, have the obligation to, to, uh, to, to enforce the less intrusive uh, remedy that will solve the competition concern. And this also shows why we're saying this, this might actually be the way to go, that we're talking about sort of deep ingrained conflicts of interest in a very complex market where this idea of, of behavioral uh, commitments seems to be quite far-fetched uh, if they can at all be, be monitored uh, by anyone uh, who is not controlling the algorithms uh, that are put to work here. So it's an extraordinary situation, but of course it shows our willingness to use our tools if we meet situations where this is uh, the only solution uh, that might work. All right, Commissioner, before we let you go, one personal note, reports are that you're up for possibly leading the European Investment Bank. Any statement you want to make about that? No, not at all. This is, this is very early days. And, and first, there is a vetting process uh, among the, the different uh, sort of potential candidates uh, to check qualifications.